Hi, and welcome to Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast, the podcast for real estate agents absolutely everywhere. I'm Lisa B, and during this podcast, we're going to be talking about everything real estate. What's working, what's not working, AI, automation, technology, EXP Realty, and absolutely everything to do with real estate. I'll have guest speakers as well, where we'll answer your questions from the Facebook group, Let's Talk About Real Estate. So if you haven't joined the Facebook group, make sure you do that now, and we'd be happy to help answering any questions. And again, welcome to the show. Okay, Sangeeta Sugu, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank I you. I was going to say this morning. It's it's morning where you are. Good afternoon where I am. That's where it is. <laughs> it's really morning here. It's yeah. not an Exactly. So you're joining us all the way from Hyderabad in India. Um, you've had an amazing career in real estate. And so you own a, a company called Synergy. You've got health and wellness. You've got your property, farmland and farmhouses and finance. Yes. And you even read tarot cards, do you? I saw somewhere. Yes. That would be interesting. Okay. And so you have a master's degree in commerce, business administration and management too. Yes. Wow. Right. You've done, and a member of BNI. So you've done a lot of different things in real estate, haven't you? Right. Amazing. Uh -huh. So can you tell us a little bit about your career in real estate? Like when you started and what you've done? It's almost uh, 22 years. It's around 2000, I can say, that uh, I jumped into real estate. So I started with uh, that too in Hyderabad. That yeah. is... Um, it was the airport coming up here. Ah. Uh, around that time, I can say. Right. Uh, it was not even uh, told to people or people were not aware that people, uh, that airport, an international airport is going to come. Ah. Around that time, I can say, I, I I did do my own bit of homework, my resources and my research and um, around that area of uh, airport, not exactly where the airport was coming, but then later understood that somewhere after some Shabbat it's going to come. Mm -hmm. And there I started doing my research and started uh, building my connects with the local farmers. Okay. Smart. It's not that I got lands through any agents. No, I did my legwork. Mm. I did my legwork. So I got connected to the local people, the local farmers. Mm -hmm. And that particular area is called Tanda. It's called Tanda. Mm -hmm. And the tribe what lives there is uh, Lamani. Mm -hmm. Lamani, yes, some call it Lambadi or uh, Lamani, whatever. So yes. made some connections there. And did uh, uh, after the homework, got into the legalities of the land and checked if somebody was interested to sell so in that way, I could uh, source few parcels of land. Wow. Um, and that's how one moment. Yeah. That was a smart thing yeah. to do. I am going to silence my phones. Yes. I did. So, <laughs> so that's how I uh, started my career into real estate. Uh, that initial approach was not with the intention to do any real estate business, trust me, let me be very honest about it. Hmm. It was like for me and for my family, I wanted to buy lands mm -hmm. in a good prospective area where I can see a uh, good amount of appreciation after airport come. That was the idea yes. of doing that research. I yes. got the land and once I am done with myself and my family, what do I do? I will share slowly the same information. Now, I'm done with my resources of money or mm -hmm. my investments. Mm -hmm. It was a small time, small thinking at that time. Yes. So uh, then to my near and dear people like my friends, maybe colleagues, maybe neighbors, then I started pitching them saying that, see, very soon the airport is going to come. So we got the land. Yeah. And would you like to source some land? I can help you. And that's it. It started and sparked. It sparked, I can say. <laughs> it was oh, a bit good. <laughs> so good. That's so smart to hear what, you know, to see what something, something's coming that's going to obviously build the value and, and all that sort of thing and, and potentially they buy it off you as well. That's awesome. And best part is like my business is not, uh, I, I don't say that I did 
put a uh, extraordinary effort onto it or something like maybe some marketing plan or maybe some promotions and all no it organically grew my business my connections my customers getting more customers my existing customer referring more customers it went on organically so yes. that's why i don't have that much of digital presence about my uh, real estate business i can say because i never intend uh, to, to be honest i never intend to to be into this business also that's so i i was into i am a health and wellness consultant as well i have a, another business of that i am a tarot card reader and this started growing organically and i said i should not give up on it or i should not stop what is coming to me i have to start nurturing it and that's how that's how it went on and slowly slowly then i got some more people you know uh, team up with me a team was built and then yeah then we i uh, see our unique uh, uh, usp i can say Yes. is not about selling or having what land parcels but uh, uh, procuring lands the right lands right. the right zone uh, that should be in the right zone and yeah. getting it at the right price in india i'll tell you what happens is there are certain middlemen uh, yeah. i mean mostly agents or middlemen brokers not even agents they are called brokers yeah. what they do is the land is sold to the buyer at a higher price Mm -hmm. and the farmer is given a very low price oh really yeah and middle margin entire chunk of huge money the broker eats wow and this is something insane it's insane they are the real owners they, that were inherited property right the farmer and yeah. they are selling it to the urban people then they need that price to be given to them mm -hmm. and that's how i plug, plugged in myself there i said i would not buy any land shown by a broker that's yeah. my principle that's yes. and even if somebody shows it i said okay you have shown it i give you your 1% or whatever is your uh, commission yes. but you will put me through the farmer directly Fantastic. i am going to talk to that farmer directly and my money will reach that farmer from I my hand to his hand I'm so glad you do that. That's awesome. That's amazing. Because the poor farmer is going to be the one that misses out when they, you know, the agent comes in and takes all the money or the broker comes in and takes all the money. Yeah. So that's all. So this uh, this also added value to my, uh, you know, for the business ethics, people started liking me. You know, the how I source my land, how I, uh, I mean, work on that land, maybe level it. Even if it is the stone area or whatever, I get it leveled, I get it fenced, I get it get it lush with the greenery or uh, mm -hmm. plantations and all. Build a very small, small farmhouse, you know. So that made people interesting, for people interesting to go and buy and, uh, you know, have their weekend home with family or friends or celebrate their weekends there. So that's how. And this... Out of passion, I've started doing this. Uh, you know, it's a passionate thing. I started feeling, I started feeling like, yes, something good. See, like my basic foundation is health and wellness. Yes. And this farmlands and having a farmhouse concept where you're going and regenerating yourself on the weekend is yeah. something well connected to health and wellness. Yes. That's why I could find the sink. The same existing customers of my health and wellness, yeah. which is about, uh, 25 30 years old business for me the same customers could come to my farmland's business as well yes exactly so that's how so that is reason why i it's not that i have not dealt with any plots or commercial buildings or residential apartments villas no i did deal with them as a requirement comes we did source and we did uh, give that furnish that requirement to the customers but my basic interest the core is farmlands and farmhouses. Yeah. And farmhouses also, like we started now collaborating. It's not that all I do alone. It's a uh -huh. team. It's a team where I started collaborating with people who do certain sort of puff panel houses, container houses, wooden bamboo houses, uh, mud houses, you know, different forms of houses like where people enjoy to go and live there. 
Wow. See, you're very entrepreneurial. That's what I love about you too. And that's, do you think that like the BNI model we were talking before we, we came on the podcast, um, the BNI model, that really encourages that, doesn't it? Encourages that, you know, that the entrepreneurs and business people, which which I love, I love. 100% about it. I can vouch on it that my personal transformation and my business transformation is due to BNI. Mm -hmm. And the type of trainings I get there or the type of connections mm -hmm. I have got there and I've nurtured it, I've given myself sent person to BNI, I feel like. Or maybe I need to do more also. It's not that. We wouldn't have met. To... We, we wouldn't yeah. have met if it wasn't for BNI because Barry met three and then you've met Barry through three. And so it's a wonderful platform, Lisa. I think yeah. you should go to one of the chapters there with yeah. Barry there. Yeah. As a visitor, as a guest, you go as a guest. Experience the uh, what BNI does. Yeah, so, absolutely. No, it's amazing. I've seen what it's done for Barry and, and for you and for three, definitely. Yeah. All right, now I wanted to get onto another topic. Um, as you, as I said, you know, I, I went to India in, in December and January this year, um, and something that a lot of people spoke about was the women's empowerment. So, what does that mean to you as a female in India? What does that mean to you? What's happening now, and what you feel needs to happen still? Okay, now uh, it's. Uh, I mean, when I was young, I can say. That time things were different yeah. than now what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, women were mostly like uh, housemaker, homemakers or housewives or they their duty. They, yeah. they themselves used to assume that my duty is to take care of my family, my husband, my kids, my in-laws, my home, and that's it. Yes. And then that went on for a certain period. Maybe my granny and my mom were like that then uh, my granny was totally like that I can say yes. then there came an era where women started uh, little socializing like having kitty parties some group parties tea parties um, something like that that was my mom's era okay yes. Yes. my mom's era where I uh, still remember like my mom having Mahila Mandal that is called women's club something yes. like that going for meetings and having some tea party, snack party, having some games to play there, some fun games yes. and all that and little bit of socializing. Mm. And some women in that started doing some small time businesses like bedsheet business, clothes business, pickles, mm. something, okay. uh, food business. You know, yes. they started becoming small, small entrepreneurs, which connected, the business connected to them, mm -hmm. like which is dealt by them, like the food business, or any clothing business, some some uh, artifacts business. Mm -hmm. So then later things changed, I can say. Previously, though women were educated, but they were not too open to get into some business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, women were getting into jobs. They mm -hmm. were getting into jobs. Yeah, uh, Being an entrepreneur or build their own business was very less. I don't say no at all. It was very less. Yes. At least not for the common people. Yes. Then there came an era when I grew up and things changed and many women started getting into small-time entrepreneurships, small-time oh, awesome. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is the paradigm shift, I can say. People, the mindset changed. See, it's uh, uh, in India, it is like women is mostly dependent on the, uh, either by on the father or on the, that is on the parents or on a husband or if husband is not there on brother or something she is dependent she is not uh, independent right. uh, most of the families you will see that uh, yeah. even now many women are in the same way but there is a lot of change now yeah. people started even the other people in the home started understanding that no women need their own uh, priorities of uh, uh, I'm not developing themselves like it could be personally or professionally or so and then it came exponential growth I can say that growth is exponential women started coming uh, into businesses uh, food business catering business um, I have seen women into gold gold making gold ornaments business silver ornaments yes. now real estates do it. Uh, so you feel there's a lot more doors. Coffee shops, bakeries. 
Yes. So many different type of businesses women are heading and they are being very successful as well. They are really dedicated, I can say. Fantastic. So there's a lot more doors open and, and all of that sort of thing. It's it's you can do whatever you want to do basically now. And basically women are talented to do multitasking. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Biologically, they are made like that, multitaskers. They are biologically made. Yes, 100%. <laughs> so, <laughs> can that they easy. can do multitasking. They can handle many things simultaneously, <laughs> give equal inter interest and importance to each and every topic and balance. Work-life balance is very good with women, I can say. Definitely. Okay. Now, talking about real estate agents in India, what sort of training do you think real estate agents need? From what you've seen, like you're very experienced and you know, you've know you sort of uh, been around a long time, what do you think they need um, in order to go to the next level or to be successful in real estate? Well, the agents, uh, uh, the real estate sector in India is still a lot unorganized, I can say it's unorganized. It's now a combination of men and women, though it is a male-dominated uh, sec sector. Yes. Uh, women are less. Uh, it is uh, not organized. So definitely training will improve that particular sector very much. Yes. To streamline and align it to uh, professionalism, I can say. Yes. <laughs> I can uh, tell you a few topics like where the training is required. First is personality development right okay communication skills mm -hmm. these are basics i can say these are basics just excuse me let me have some water yeah sure no that's interesting the communication definitely yeah communication skills personality development yeah and uh it could be like code of conduct or business ethics yeah it's a very uh sensitive subject uh, but this has to be told Yes. You know, on a longer run. See, it's not like you know, it It has to be taught. Yes. I don't say it has to be taught. Mm. Uh, it has to be made realized that somebody following code of conduct or business ethics are mm. successful. Yes. On a longer run. And they stand for a longer time in the market and they build their credibility. Yes. This realization has to be given at the initial stages when these agents enter into the market space, marketplace initially yes. because uh, once they build their reputation they can stand for a long time so yes. this foundation has to be strong so the young people who come into business of real estate you know just for you know one two deals try to make more money and they lose their career as well and yes. they get into all bad practices to make their means there yes. so this particular subject also has to be brushed again uh, with the uh, I mean code of conduct or business ethics professionalism. Now this is all one side. The yeah. other side would be like you know the government policies prevailing here mm -hmm. and what type of lands, the zoning, master uh, town uh, or the village master plans for procuring lands, and this is the other side. That is the uh, technical knowledge. For yeah. real estate yeah. and apart from that third point will be how to have the market presence market penetration through digital presence yeah. or uh, maybe you know digital media could be instagram facebook linkedin youtube blogging blogging whatever means they can do yeah. you know to promote themselves, out, themselves yeah. and um, have their you know uh, yeah. reachability to the people so yeah. the small people only grow into big brands. Mm -hmm. It's only that they need to go consistently with all strategic planning and execution. This is what I say. I agree. Now, I, I agree with everything you said there because the credibility when you're building your reputation, then like you said, the long term, you're going to get business because people trust you. If they don't trust you, if 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 you have a bad deal with somebody, you tell a hundred people, you know, you know, and if you've had an amazing um, deal with somebody, you're going to say the same thing. You'd rather positive things go around because when somebody goes to sell or buy, 
if you haven't got that credibility, you've done the wrong thing by that person, they're not going to refer you and it's going to be harder for you to get business. So it's really is building that foundation of the credibility, isn't it? And, and yes, the communication. So you want to get back to people and let them know what's happening, whether you've got the property for sale or um, you, you're taking buyers through the marketing. You can't rely on everybody else to give you leads. It's really, you know, you've got to be out there and building your reputation. And once you do, then that's going to help you get, you know, people referral business like you do. You know, you're a classic example. You know, you you did something amazing and then other people found out about it. And that's how your business was born. You know, that's exactly what it is. It's referral because you've done the right thing. And, you know, like you said, by default, you're in real estate, really, you know, <laughs> you know, and you've kept it going because you've looked after people. So you've got the reputation. So, and you've built a brand as well around your farmlands and all that sort of stuff as well. So exactly what you've done, people can learn from. So anybody listening to this, like definitely reach out to Sang Sangeeta because, you know, she's done this and, um, and has done it very successfully over the last 22 years. Um, so no, well done to you. You've done really amazing. And Shree's raved about you and, you know, like, yeah, just amazing. So what else would you like to add, whether it's to real estate agents or to the consumer, anything about real estate? What else can you add? Anything? Mm, about the trends of consumers, I can say. Uh, initially, people, very initially, people were hesitating to invest on lands. Mm -hmm. uh, because in India, there are many lands which got uh, encroached by other people. Oh, That's right. called encroachment or in local language, it's called kabja. So in India, it did happen long time back also. Even now, certain cases we can hear as news. Uh, but, you know, people were hesitant to invest in lands at that time. Mostly people were looking in, within the city, within the city. And people's focus was uh, buying an apartment or or at the most a villa. Mm -hmm. Open lands in the city are, you know, they don't measure in acres or square yards. They measure in square feet. Yeah. Because right. they are quite expensive. So, but later people started moving. See, I can say 2014, the state of Telangana was formed. Mm -hmm. Okay. The state was a united state with Andhra Pradesh and it got divided in 2014. In 2014, the measure of uh, highways in Telangana was 2,500 kilometers. Mm. And recent survey says, in 2023 survey says, that the measure of national highways is 5,000 kilometers. That's huge. So the city is expanding. The city is getting bigger. It's huge. And people are getting aware. Yes, the real investments need to be done out of the city, the outskirts. And here I can say particularly for Hyderabad, we are having inner ring road, mm -hmm. then outer ring road. Then we are having regional ring road, which is coming up. Well connected. Regional ring road is going to be well connected with multiple districts across the Hyderabad surround and uh, Hyderabad is a city which uh, which is not surrounded by sea anywhere okay it's centrally in the land it's a land mass so there is all the scope to expand now if you see Mumbai yeah. uh, which is the capital of Maharashtra now 50 percent of Mumbai the border is covered by sea so the, uh, the city cannot expand on the sea, right? But Hyderabad is having that, uh, you know, facility or that added advantage that city can grow yeah, in 360 wow. degrees. And the climate over here is amazing climate. Yeah, It's neither uh, too humid or, uh, of course, in summers it's hot and it it's rainy in the rain, rainy season. But still, compared to I can say the climate is best it is accommodative it is uh, you know even for industrial development in any segment let's say um, heavy electricals or heavy engineering or pharmaceutical or any segment mm -hmm. uh, this city or around the city is best for as climate wise connect 
connected road connected or infrastructure wise so that these all things give an added value to the particular city where i am living in for real yeah. estate so like we spoke about last time, you know, in Hyderabad, you've got the the tech companies coming there, you've got manufacturing, you've got farmers, you know, the the, the pharma companies, like the pharmaceutical companies. Um, so, you know, the Hyderabad market is going to get a lot more, um, what's the word, sophisticated, because you're yes. going to be dealing with a lot more uh, people that have got real estate experience and they're going to expect a higher level of uh, professionalism from real estate agents so I think it's an amazing opportunity to really stand out and like we said have that cre credibility the transparency um, you know and all of that sort of thing to to be able to have that foundation of the person to trust um, and referrals and things like that and repeat business so it's it's an amazing opportunity there now for for Hyderabad um, and we've got three ama amazing um, agents in Hyderabad. So um, it's, yeah. So if anybody's looking at buying or selling in Hyderabad, definitely reach out as well to Sangeeta because, um, you know, it's sort of, um, yeah, you've got the reputation and all that sort of thing as well. So um, definitely who I would be recommending um, you guys over there, 100%. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> all righty. Thank you so much for, for attending this uh, meeting today in our podcast. And yeah, it's amazing. So I would love to do another podcast with you as well at another time. Definitely, definitely. And I'm loving loving this entire session as well. Yeah, it's awesome. I love I love finding out all about India and and you know, I've I've learned a lot today again. Every time I speak to you and, and the other guys, I learn so much about India. I love it. So thank you so much and I'll see you again soon on here. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk About Real Estate podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have a question about real estate, then please join the group on Facebook, also called Let's Talk About Real Estate. For those of you who are interested in EXP, please join us at 10 a.m. Brisbane time every Wednesday morning for EXP Explained. Thank you again for joining us and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and see you next week.